Hello, everyone. If you like what I'm doing here, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting. It would really help the channel out quite a bit. Thank you very much. Captain Midnight, brought to you every day, Monday through Friday, at this same time, by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. Now, here's a real tip for every adventure-loving fellow and girl. If you're not already a member of the new 1940 Flight Patrol, hurry, hurry and join tonight or tomorrow or Sunday for sure. Because the first big present for members of the new 1940 Flight Patrol is just around the corner. And you'll want your official medal of membership so you can show you're entitled to one of these wonderful free presents when they come. And say, wait till you see this free present. It's the strangest, most fascinating thing you've ever seen, I'll bet. Why, you'll drive people crazy with curiosity, wondering what makes it do the queer things it does. So hurry and join while there's still time. Then, besides getting this free present, you'll be ready to help Chuck and Patsy in a thrilling adventure that's coming for every member of the new 1940 Flight Patrol. So, when you're out in the family car with mother or dad, stop at your Skelly service station and join up at once. Remember, it doesn't cost you a single penny. No seals, no box stops, not even a penny for a stamp. You just tell your Skelly man you want to join the new 1940 Flight Patrol, and he'll give you your official junior pilot's application card and send in to Skelly headquarters for your spinning propeller medal of membership. And say, boy, will your eyes pop when you see this gleaming bronze medal. It has an amazing three-blade spinning propeller on it that will help you decide things. Like, oh, like, who's first in line? Who's winner? Who's loser? Who does the dishes? And who goes to the movies? You just spin it and get your answer. Then there's that strange secret password on the medal, too. Only members of the flight patrol can figure out what it means. You'll mystify all your friends with that mysterious password in your spinning propeller medal. So tonight or tomorrow or Sunday, when you're out in the family car, just ask Dad or Mother to stop at your Skelly service station. Tell your skelly man you want to join the new 1940 Flight Patrol, and he'll do all the rest. Then, when those wonderful free gifts are ready, there'll be one reserved for you. And now to Captain Midnight. Yesterday, you remember, the mysterious pilot, Zollinger, who had been held prisoner by Captain Midnight and his party, escaped to his chief, Ivan Shark, and gave the latter wrong information as to the direction in which Captain Midnight and his friends were headed. They are really heading for the estate of Juan Pareda, and today we find them, soon after daybreak, toiling over a ridge. Captain Midnight and Chuck are ahead of the others. Captain Midnight is speaking. Look over there to the west, Chuck. Isn't that a beautiful sight? Uh, gee, it sure is. Well, you can see for miles and miles. Yes. This must be one of the highest points in the whole country. I guess it is all right. I'm sure this is the high ridge we could see from the field where Pinky and Slim had their cabin. Yeah, that's the one, all right. Now, oh, wait. This is about far enough. We can look over the crest now, but don't let yourself be seen. Gosh, Red, look. We can see the other side. There's the dried lake bed, mm -hmm. and there's that black two-seater we were flying. Yes, and stuck as fast in the mud as ever. And maybe worse, too. She'd probably settle some overnight. No doubt. Oh, wait. There's a couple of boulders, Chuck. Let's sit down a few minutes and talk things over. Okay. You know, Red, I was just wondering about something. Yeah, what was it, Chuck? Well, we've been away from Senor Pareda's hunting lodge for about nine hours. We can't tell what's happened since we left. Now, wouldn't it be wiser for us to leave Ma and Patsy on the ridge here while we go down and look things over? That's using the old bean, Chuck. We'll do just that. And there aren't two finer guys in the world than Pinky and Slim. I'll say. Now then, let's go over a few things. Okay, Red. What's the first thing? Well, I never look on the dark side of things, Chuck. But the more I think about it, the less hope I have that Major Steele and Conley got across the border. You mean on account of that gas they have in their plane? Yes. It wasn't the right kind. And on a long cross-country flight, the engine's bound to overheat. Gee, Red, if that's the case, Major Steele and Conley may be in a bad way. The country between here and, and the border is awfully rough. And if they have a force I thought of that too, Chuck. 
But we've got to consider our own situation first. Because we have women along. But Major Steele and Conley should have a forced landing, which means they'd be lost for a long time. We can't hope for any help from them. That's right. And we don't know a thing about the towns around here or where we could go for help here either. If we could only get this black two-seater out of the mud, we might fly her across the border. No, Chuck, no, I don't think there's a chance. She doesn't carry much gas, and I doubt very much whether there's enough in her tanks right now for an hour's flying. And we don't know where we can get any more. No. Besides that, we haven't got her out of the mud yet. It looks to me as if we only have one source of help. Yeah, what's that, Chuck? Senor Pareda. He's gotten away from Shark now, and if he can find his men, they'll give us the help we need. Yes, you're right. Senor Pareda is our immediate hope. And if there's anybody in the world I'd like to help, Chuck, he's the one. Oh, I never heard such a pitiful story in all my life. It doesn't seem possible anybody could be so inhuman as Ivan Shark. No, Chuck, no, it doesn't. Damn, but I've seen so much of Ivan Shark by this time that nothing he does surprises me. His treatment of Parada is just another in the terrible list of crimes for which he's got to be brought to justice. And another thing. Don't forget, Senor Parada's daughter is in Shark's power. No, I'm not forgetting that. It just means we've got to act and act fast. Uh, that's a tough thing to do when you don't have any equipment. Well, there must be some kind of a way out. There's got to be. That's the way to talk. And we'll find that way, too. All right. Come on. You and I'd better be getting along. We'll see. Uh, can you see Patsy down the trail, then? In just a second. I'll stand on this rock. All right. That's an idea. Oh, now I can see her. She's looking this way. I'll give her the old signal. She answered you. Yeah, and here she comes, too. Yes, and when she gets here, we'll follow out your idea and go on a little scouting trip. Here I am. Oh, Patsy. I ran up right away. Now, listen carefully, Patsy. I've got some instructions for you. Okay, Red, I'm listening. But first, uh, how's your mother feeling? Oh, she's all right, Red, but rather tired. Yes, I thought so. Now, uh, do you see that grove of trees next to the trail there? Over there to the left? Mm Mm-hmm, that's the one. Now, fix a place so your mother can lie down and rest. And tell Pinky and Slim to stand on guard until Chuck and I... Or one of us returns. Okay, Red. But what about me? Can't I come with you and Chuck? No, Patsy, no. Not this time. We don't know what we may be running into, and I'd rather you stay with Pinky and Slim. Just as you say, Red. But don't ever forget that I'm one of the best little scouts you ever saw. I'm game for anything. (laughs) She is, too. Well, Chuck, come on. Let's be on our way. We've still got to find out a lot of things without anyone seeing us do it. Now, hold it, Chuck, hold it. I can see one parade's hunting lodge from here. That's it. Gosh, isn't it quiet down here? Yes, I'll say it is. As soon as you get away from the top of that ridge, you can't hear any wind at all. But listen, Red. Huh? I do hear something. It seems to come from the cabin. Well, Chuck, you're right. It's music. It's coming from the hunting lodge. Come on, let's get a little closer. Keep behind these trees as you go forward now and watch it. Yes, it's some kind of Mexican music or I'll eat my helmet. Well, look, someone's running out of the cabin. You're right. Well, now, who in the world could... Well, listen, they're singing, too. Yes, there's more than one voice. What? Well, there must be several. Oh, now I can see. But well, look, that man is Senor Pareda. See, he's standing in that open spot looking out over the dry lake. Yes, it is Senor Pareda, Chuck. Come on. Hey, here's this. He's looking this way. He doesn't know who it is. Oh, look, he's running back to the cabin. Senor Pareda! Senor Pareda! Well, look, he's stopped. He sees us. Yeah, he sees us all right. Senor Pereira! It's nothing for me, guys. Senor Ramsey, I'm so glad to see you all. And we're glad to see you, Senor Pereira. I have the great sin that the misfortune has happened to you. No, Senor, no, nothing has happened to us. That is nothing bad. You have found your amigos, your friends? Yes, Senor. We went down the trail you told us about and we found them. Oh, but the Capitan, you did not leave them down there. Oh, no, no, Senor. They are above us on the ridge. We thought we'd better come down and see if you were here. See, si, Senor. I am here, and I am very happy. Well, gosh, Senor, what's the music? Ah, the music. Listen. That is why I am so happy. My men, they have come back to me. They are in the cabin, and they are playing and singing the songs, because once again, they have found their man. Oh, that's grand news, senor. Now that you've found your men, perhaps we can do something against Ivan Shark. See, si, senor, that is what we shall do. But my heart is sad when I remember that my beautiful daughter, Dolores, is in Ivan Shark's power. Yes, senor, we know. And we'll do something about that just as soon as we can. But first, we must decide what to do right now. How many men do you have, senor? Uh, let me think. Oh, there must be 15. 15? Oh, that's splendid, senor. Why, with that many chuck, we've got a chance to pull 
pull that plane out of the mud. Oh, gosh, that's swell. Well, hadn't we better get to work before she sinks in any further? Yes, you bet. We'll do that right away. Oh, Senor Pereira. See me, Capitan? Do you have any rope around your hunting lodge? See, si, Senor. I am sure we had the rope in the cabin. Good, good. All right, Senor. Now, will you get that rope and your man and come out to the plane? Chuck and I will go out there and decide which is the best way to pull the ship out. See, si, Senor. I will get the rope and my men at once. And soon, poof, like that, we will have the airplane out. All right. Come on, Chuck. We'll go out to the ship and make plans for pulling it out. Gosh, Ned, I just thought of something. Yeah? Suppose we do pull the ship out. We won't be able to take off because the wheels will sink as soon as she starts to run. I thought about that, Chuck. It's going to be a ticklish job, I'll admit. But it can be done at all. Yes, I think it can. Now, look. Look at this stuff we're walking in. See? It seems fairly firm. See that? Yeah, it seems firm here. But I don't think it is out near the middle. And that's where you'll have to take off. I realize that, Chuck. But now, listen. Here's my plan. If we can pull the ship out of the mud, we'll take everything out we can. In other words, make her as light as possible. Then we'll pull her into the shore. Then turn her around so she's headed toward the middle. Oh, I begin to get the idea. You'll start her going to the shore where the surface is firmer. Right. And by the time you get out near the middle, you'll have enough speed so that the lift of the wings will take most of the weight off the wheel. That's the idea, kid. Well, it may work, Fred. But if those wheels ever start sinking in, it's going to be too bad. Yes, I know that, Chuck. But we've got to take a chance. Uh, we can get out of this bad spot we're in a lot quicker if we have a plane to fly. Mm, gosh. Look how those wheels have sunk down. Uh, Even the axle's down in the muck. Now, how are we ever going to pull her out? Well, now, here's my plan, Chuck. We'll attach the rope to the axle, and while some of us pull up on the wheel, the rest can pull forward on the rope. If we can once get it started, we'll be all right. Uh, it may work, Red. Oh, look. Hmm? Here comes Senor Parade and his men, and they have a long rope with them. Yes. I wonder... What's the matter, Chuck? I thought I heard something, Red. Hmm? Yes. Yes, there's a plane in the air. Oh, I've looked all around, Red, but I can't see it. Yeah, but there's one around. And he's getting closer. Oh, look, Red, look. Huh? There's a black plane coming over the top of that ridge. Oh. And he's heading straight for us. Oh, run, Chuck, run for your life. Hang up, we're in there. Hang around. Go back. Go back. Their plane is diving on us. Just at the moment when things began to look brighter for Captain Midnight and his friends, a black plane dives out of the crimson sky. Have Ivan Shark's rascals discovered this mountain refuge? And what will happen in the next minute? Will Captain Midnight, Chuck Ramsey, together with Senor Pareda and his men, be able to reach the shelter of the tree-lined shore? Tune in next Monday to Captain Midnight. And now, fellas and girls... Be sure you are a member of the new 1940 Flight Patrol before this coming Monday. Be sure you have your official junior pilot's card. Because the first big free gift for Flight Patrol members will be announced real soon. So stop at your Skelly service station when you're out riding in the family car tonight, tomorrow, or Sunday for sure. Tell your Skelly man you want to join the Flight Patrol. He'll give you your junior pilot's card right away. And he'll send in to Skelly headquarters for your burnished bronze medal of membership with a three-blade spinning propeller. And he'll put your name on the list for the first big present when it comes. Every member gets one free. But remember, you don't have to spend a penny to join. Just tell your Skelly man you want to belong to the new 1940 Flight Patrol, and he'll do the rest. But don't wait. Join right away so when those new free presents come, there'll be one for you. Now, don't forget to tune in again Monday, same time, same station, for further transcribed adventures of Captain Midnight. Brought to you by the Skelly Oil Company, Skelly Jobbers and Dealers. Who is this new enemy who has suddenly appeared in the sky? Can Captain Midnight and Chuck salvage the plane still mired in the dried lake bed? Be sure to listen Monday. Until then, this is Don Gordon, your skelly man, saying goodbye and happy landing! Oh.